Okay, so this is a grade 10 question paper, physical sciences, um, and we will be doing question 11, because that is the question that is talking about electric circuits. So question 11, 11.1, 11 consider the circuit in the diagram below. So before we go on answering any of these questions, let us first analyze this electric circuit. This is the circuit diagram that was given to us in the question. So let's start here. We have a battery. So this is how you would normally draw a battery. This would be the positive terminal and this would be the negative terminal of your battery. And that battery has in it 24 volts. So that's why they've written 24 volts over there. And just above the battery, you see that there is connected to it something we call a voltmeter. It's a device that measures voltage. And that voltmeter, we call it V1. And as you see that it is connected in parallel to, to the battery. So why would say it's connected in parallel? Because the battery is on this branch and then the voltmeter is on a, another branch. They are not on the same branch or on the same line, whatever you want to call it. And then if you move along, you would notice that now we have our first ammeter. An ammeter is a device that, that measures the current. And that ammeter, we call it A1. And then we move down through our branch. And then you notice that on the same branch again, we have connected to it a light bulb. So this is just a schematic representation of how you would draw a, a, a light bulb. That light bulb has a resistance of 8 ohms. So remember, this is the unit of measure for resistance, we call it an ohm. And then just above it, just above that light bulb, we see that we have another voltmeter and this voltmeter is called V2. And notice that it is also connected in parallel to this light bulb. So your voltmeter is always connected in parallel to whatever instrument it is connected to. And then we move along again and then we see that we now have these two light bulbs. These two light bulbs are connected in parallel to each other and the first light bulb has a resistance of 8 ohms the second light bulb has a resistance of 8 ohms as well so they are the same size and then you see on the same branch as this 8 ohm resistor we have connected to it another uh, ammeter and this ammeter we call it a2 and then on this branch we have connected to it next to this light bulb another ammeter and this ammeter we call it a3 then let's move along if we move along we'll find ourselves we'll find what is it a switch so a switch how you draw it this is how you normally draw a switch and then you'd write the letter s question says if this switch is open what will be the reading on voltmeter v1 and what will be the v reading on ammeter A1? If the switch is open, that means there is no current flow in our circuit. So the reading on ammeter A1 will actually be, so the current, remember the symbol for current is I, which is B0 amperes. This is the unit for current. But here for, for this voltmeter, this voltmeter will only measure the potential difference across the terminals of this battery. So that reading will only be V1 will be 24 volts because this is a 24 volts battery. Okay, the switch is now closed. As you can see, I've closed it. And we are asked to calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit, of the entire circuit. How do we do that? Let us first describe what equivalent resistance is. Equivalent resistance is the sum of all the resistance or the total. How do we find the total? To find the total resistance in the circuit, we must first find the equivalent resistance of the two light bulbs that are connected in parallel. So these are the two light bulbs that are connected in, in parallel. 
As I've mentioned, our first step is to find the equivalent resistance for the parallel connection. So remember, we have these two light bulbs, each with a resistance of 8 ohms, and they are connected in parallel. So now we have to find the equivalent resistance. The first step I would say, let's us just label the resistance. Let's call this R1, which is 8 ohm, and then let's call this R2, and then let's call this resistance R3. How do we find the equivalent resistance for these two parallel, uh, these two light bulbs that are connected in parallel? To do that, you'll find that at the back of your question paper, you're going to come across a, a formula such as this one. So you have 1 over Rp, P meaning parallel, which is equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, this can go on forever, depending on how many parallel re resistors or resistance you have. So in our case, we said R1 is equals to 8 ohm, R2 equals to 8 ohm, as well as R3 equals to 8 ohm. But these two are the only resistors that are connected, the resistance, yeah, the resistance that is in parallel. So to do that, then we we'll have our formula will then become 1 over Rp equals to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And we know that the resistance for R2 is 8 ohms and the resistance for R3 is also 8 ohms. So this is a quick mathematical calculation. You can put it in your calculator and then you would find that 1 over Rp equals to 1 over 4. So we have 1 over Rp equaling 1 over 4. To make Rp the subject of the formula, we can simply cross multiply. What do I mean? It will be 1 times 4 is going to be equals to 4. Rp times 1 is going to be Rp. So meaning, pardon, so meaning Rp, the value for our equivalent, for our, for the, the value for the equivalent resistance for the parallel connection is going to be 4 ohms. Now we have found the equivalent resistance and we called it RP. We called it RP for these two resistance to be 4 ohms. So it's almost like we've combined these two resistance into a single resistance and we found out to be 4 ohms. And remember, our question was to find the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. Now, we'll also, now, to do that, we'll use another formula that you will find available at the back of your question paper. And you'd say resistors that are in series. So S means series. To find the total resistance, you can simply say R1 plus R2 plus, depending on how many resistors you have in parallel. So in this case, like I've mentioned, it's almost as if we have combined these two resistors into a single one. So we have this resist resistance R1 and resistance Rp. They are now in series. So meaning this formula is going to be Rs equals to R1 plus Rp. So the value for R1 is 8, the value for Rp we found it to be 4, and 8 plus 4 is 12. So this means that the equivalent resistance, the value that we're looking for, for the circuit is nothing but 12 ohms. Okay, the question requires us to calculate the reading on this voltmeter, V2. To answer this question, we have to know that resistors in series are potential dividers. That is, they split the total voltage. The total voltage in the circuit, remember we said it is 24 volts. So that is the voltage supplied to the circuit by this battery. The ratio between the 8 ohm resistance and the 4 ohm resistance is 8 is to 4. So 8 is to 4. So that is the ratio. So this is the ratio between 
this ratio r1 or this this resistance r1 and the parallel the, and rp for ohm because remember we calculate the equivalent resistance for this parallel connection and we called it rp and that ratio is 4 8 is to 4. what does that mean this means that this means that eight parts of the total voltage will be for r1 and four parts of the total voltage will be for R, rp but then let us put this in in mathematical terms so we will say to find the voltage on two we'll simply say v2 equals to the eight parts divided by the total parts so the total parts will just be eight plus four it's going to give us 12 then we'll multiply the entire thing by the total voltage which is 24 if you put this in a calculator you're gonna find the value of 16 volts volts because to find the the unit for voltage is volts similarly we can do the same thing for that parallel connection we said four parts of it will be the four parts of the total voltage will be for the rp resistance and then the total is still 12 parts multiply this by 24 and it's going to give us 8 volts so you see that 16 plus 8 volts gives us back to our total our total voltage which was 24 volts so it's, we have found the value for the reading for v2 to be 16 volts Okay, so how do the readings on this ammeter A2 and ammeter A3 compare with each other? Because the two resistors are the same size, that is 8 ohm and 8 ohm, this means that the current on them will also be the same. What does this mean? This means that the reading on A2 will be the same as the reading on A3. So that answers our question. The second part of question 11 reads as follows. The graph below shows the relationship between resistance and the length of the conducting wire. So we are given a graph. There is a graph. On the y-axis, you find the resistance measured in ohms. On the x-axis, you find the length of the conducting wire measured in millimeters. As you can see, it is a straight line graph, meaning that as the length of the conducting wire increases, so it moves from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, to up to 70. As it increases, the resistance on that conducting wire also increases. So question 11.2.1 says, write down the relationship between the resistance and the length of a conducting wire. As I've mentioned, as the length of the conducting wire increases, the resistance also increases. And if you remember, this is a directly proportional relationship. That is the length of wire or the length of the conducting wire is directly proportional to the resistance. Question 11.2.2 says, determine the resistance of wire with a length of 30 millimeters. So this is a straightforward question. You can simply go to your graph and find the point on the y-axis that intersect with 30 millimeters on the x-axis. And that value is going to be between 1.3 ohms to 1.4 ohms. And this brings us to the end of our video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so, like, share, and yeah, leave a comment.